A reading from the hymn that we just sang. From the Father forth he came, and returneth to the same, captive leading death and hell, high in the song triumphant swell. Savior of the nations, come, virgin son, make here thy home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God the Father was His source. Back to God He ran His course. Into hell His road went down. Back then to His throne and crown. That text there alone summarizes our salvation. That God the Father was His source. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father, ran His course. That is, He took on flesh. The, holy, the, the presence of the Holy Temple was moved from the temple into the temple of St. Mary's womb. And there He would be born a babe lying in a manger. And then His course would continue to where shepherds would come and years later the Magi would follow the star and come and see the Christ child. And then His course would continue when He would enter into the temple and be teaching while His parents looked for Him frantically for days. And then continue in the calling of Peter, James, John, and all of the disciples, or apostles, and then the disciples who would then follow, including Mary, his mother, Mary Magdalene. And then his course, of course, would continue with the teaching of the disciples and the prophesying of his death and the destruction of the temple and the rebuilding in three days. Of course, his course would continue on the cross of Calvary where he would die. And then it was his course would continue to the tomb where he would be raised. And his course would continue as he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father who was his source. To live and reign with Him in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. St. Augustine says, You would have suffered everlasting unhappiness had it not been for this mercy. You would never have returned to life had He not shared your death. <coughs> now think, think about that for just one moment. Just one moment. That your life, your entire life depends on one thing. A death. And it seems as if in this crooked, cruel world that there are only two options. Either to be happy or to reduce the amount of pain one has in life. And it misses Christ completely. Completely misses Christ. You would have suffered everlasting unhappiness and not been able to reduce pain and suffering in your life had it not been for the death of Christ. Now I am not saying that because Christ died you will not suffer. In fact, Christ says that you will suffer being a Christian. You will suffer. But again, St. Augustine said in his Nativity Sermon, you would have been lost if he had not hastened to your aid. And still, in that suffering, Christ hastens to your aid. Theology of the cross is a heavy, heavy cross. It's a heavy, heavy weight. You would have perished had He not 
come. Behold, you people who in your sin were asleep in dead, in your sin, in that slumber, you find that you were sleeping in death. But in Christ, you wipe the sleep from your eyes and you behold the cost of your slumber, the wages of the sin that is death. Yet the woman's offspring, pure and fresh, who was promised by the Holy Spirit, enlivens your heart, grows tendon and sinew, grows flesh upon dead bones. From this point, we realize that all along, Every single sin that we have sinned was nothing more than an attempt to dethrone God. To get God off of His throne so that we could place our unworthy hind ends in His seat and say, I am God. From Genesis. God does not want you to eat of the fruit because He knows that if you do, you will be like Him. Don't you want to be like Him? And ever since then, we've been trying to recreate God, get Him off of His throne, and sit in His throne. And you know what? It worked. It worked. God was dethroned, but not the way that we think. God was dethroned in that He sent His Son into the flesh. We did not take what was rightfully His. He took our rightful place at the cross of Calvary. It's we got what we wanted, but we didn't even know we wanted it. We got the forgiveness of our sins and were made alive. God dethroned entered into the womb of a virgin born, and He does it for you. Only for you. That you would live. Awake, O oh sleepers. Awake, you who sleep. Virgin Son, come. Make here your home. Come from your throne. And be for us our death and our life. And that's what the Blessed Virgin heard here when we hear the Gospel. And the same, uh, the same thing that the Blessed Virgin heard when Simeon in the, pre Simeon in the temple held a law of salvation and said, Now, Lord, You are letting Your servant depart in peace according to Thy Word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people. A light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And that's what we do. We behold the babe in the Lord's Supper. We take and we eat and then we turn and we recess saying, my eyes have seen the God who was dethroned who was made flesh for us for the forgiveness of our sins. The high priest came down for the final sacrifice. The sacrifice of the high priest. So you who sleep, wait, dear Christian. Wait. Christ shall return. Until then, let us, the joyful, be joyful. Wipe the sleep from your eyes, for in the dawning light, there will be nothing less than your salvation. And let us sing unto Him who saved us, for you are the Father's Son, who in flesh the victory won. By your mighty power make whole, 
all our ills of flesh and soul. The victory comes. The victory comes in flesh to be riven and to be risen. Wait, dear Christian, wait. For our eyes have seen and we shall once again behold the light of the Gentile and the glory of his people, Israel. Wait. Your king is coming. Amen.